Laser like PDL and light treatments like IPL can be effective in reducing redness and flushing with rosacea. But which one should you choose? IPL versus PDL. I'm dermatologist Dr. Abby Waldman from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and I am going to walk you through the two different treatments for rosacea. And I'm even going to get these two treatments, one on one side of my face and the other on the other side so that you can directly compare them. So let's get to it. So first things before we get the treatment, you have to know that one, neither treatment is going to be a one and done cure after one treatment. Both are gonna require several treatments, usually somewhere between three and four. With IPL, it can be even more. And then you may need one or two treatments every year for maintenance. These treatments are typically spaced about four weeks apart. Two, you cannot get any sun two weeks before or two weeks after. And by any sun, I mean, if you are on the sun, you better have the widest brimmed hat on. You better be trying to stay out of the direct sunlight. That's because any sunlight is going to increase redness. So it's basically going to negate the treatment that you just got. And even in some situations can lead to more complications, more redness and more hyperpigmentation. So just avoid the sun. When you book it, look at your calendar, make sure you're not going anywhere sunny. These treatments are safe in all skin colors and skin types. But do talk to your doctor or your provider who's doing the laser or light treatment about any health concerns you might have, any bleeding disorders, so that you kind of know what to expect. And then there are some autoimmune disorders that may be a relative contraindication for getting laser. So make sure to bring up any sort of autoimmune disorders that you might have. Okay, so first I am going to be getting PDL. I'm gonna get it on my left side of my face. And what does PDL mean? PDL is pulse dye laser. It can also go by its brand name, which is V-Beam. And these lasers emit a wavelength of 585 or 595 nanometers. And that targets blood vessels and redness, but it's also shown to help with melasma and scars. The settings your provider uses will really dictate where that laser is going to go, how deep it's gonna penetrate into the skin and what size vessels it can hit. Okay, so I'm gonna be getting the PDL laser on the left side of my face here, and I'm going to be getting the IPL treatment on the right side of my face. That way you can compare them directly. So first your provider is gonna remove any makeup, any dirt, any sunscreen that you have on, usually with alcohol or a face cleanser. You will wear protective eye goggles. Those glasses are key to protecting your eyes. Your provider will also wear their own type of filtered glasses, which protect their eyes when using the laser. Because of any possible eye danger, unless you're a young child, you're unlikely gonna be able to bring a family member or friend into the room. But if you do have someone enter the room, just know that they will also need protective eyewear. Pulse dye laser feels like somebody is snapping a rubber band in your face. It's not exactly painful, but it's not comfortable either. You can actually see me wince every time I get a little pulse. It just surprises you a little bit because no one really likes having a rubber band snapped right in their face. To do one side of my face, it takes about several minutes, a few minutes. So to do the whole face, expect it to take upwards of 10 minutes. The discomfort is greatest, usually in the underside of the nose and the upper lip. It's least painful in the cheek area and the forehead. Ideally, you should not get numbing medication beforehand because the numbing medication actually reduces flushing and redness and can thus reduce the effect of the laser. The laser, again, is targeting just the redness. And so the more you actually are red, the better it's going to work. You might even like flush up your skin a little bit, like go on a jog right beforehand because the redder your skin is, the more that laser has to target. So anything that makes it less red, is gonna make it less effective. So I advise if you can tolerate the discomfort to do it without any numbing medication because you're just gonna get a better effect. You can bring like a squeezy ball to distract you, you know, hold on to the chair, whatever you need to do in order to sort of distract yourself. Again, it's over pretty quickly. Afterwards, you can apply Vaseline for discomfort, ice, you can take Tylenol if you want. So overall, in terms of pain for PDL, you know, not the worst, not exactly something you're gonna wanna do in your free time on the weekend. 
So moving on to IPL. So personally, I'd actually never received IPL before this. I have had rosacea for many, many years. I underwent treatment with PDL, and now I usually do PDL once or twice a year just as maintenance, especially as my skin's getting, I notice it getting like a little bit redder, maybe flushing more than I'll do my once or twice a year PDL. So I'd actually never received IPL. So what is IPL? It is intense pulsed light. It also goes by the brand name BBL. You may have heard it being called a photo facial. IPL is not a laser. So it is a light treatment, meaning it is a broad wavelength of light. And then your provider will put in a filter that filters through the wavelength that you want to use. So for instance, if you want to target redness and flushing, you're going to put in a filter that lets through a wavelength similar to the PDL, that 585, 595, so that that goes through and targets the redness. But it's less focused than PDL, a laser, which has all the wavelengths coming at one spot all together at the same time. So here I am getting IPL on the right side of my face. You'll see you'll wear very similar goggles to protect your eyes. You'll wash your skin the same way that you did before the PDL and likely your provider will be wearing some sort of protective eyewear as well. So unlike the pulse dye laser, which felt kind of like a snapping, I was actually surprised that the IPL hurt so much. It feels like burning. It was much worse on my forehead than it was on the rest of my face. But I actually would consider even taking a Tylenol the day of if I got this again, because I was surprised how much it hurt. And of course it's over very quickly. You know, just doing one side of my face took a few minutes. So certainly nothing to write home about, but in comparison for the PDL and the IPL, I'm gonna go ahead and say that IPL is more painful. Of course, pain is subjective, right? Everyone's gonna experience pain in a different way. Of course, I knew what to expect with PDL, having received many PDL treatments in the past. And so that might've biased how I interpreted that pain. I very much knew what to expect with the PDL and I didn't know what to expect with the IPL. So what about redness and swelling after the procedure? So here are some photos immediately after the procedure when I was just driving home or about to drive home. This is two days after and this is three days after. So if you look, you notice significantly more swelling and redness on the left side of my face where I had the PDL when compared to the right side of my face where I had the IPL. Overall, the swelling is quite mild. Really, you're gonna be the only one who really notices it. I think I did every single of event and activity I was planning on doing. I went running. I think I went to a dinner that night. Next day, you know, I went to work. No one mentioned anything. So it's certainly not anything that you're going to have downtime for. I guess I wouldn't do it right before you have like a national TV, you know, appearance or you're getting married. So, I mean, you're going to have some swelling and redness. I guess I was surprised how little I had on the IPL side, on the right side, really very minimal, maybe a little bit like on underneath the eyes for a day and then that was it. Whereas the PDL side had a little bit of swelling and redness for up to three or four days after. So in the post-procedure time, I would definitely say that PDL had more redness and swelling compared to IPL. What about other side effects? So bruising is a side effect that's described for both. I have never had bruising. I think that's usually if you use very, very targeted settings, almost aimed at getting bruising. The more bruising you have, the more effect it has. That being said, the bruising is very significant if you get it and it can last a long time. So most of the time, at least these days, I find that providers don't use what are called purpuric settings, meaning bruising settings, because people don't really want that really significant bruising for several weeks. How about other side effects? You know, I did notice with the PDL on the left side, I had more of the rosacea pimples a week out um, and I didn't have them on the right side. It's really hard to say if that was related to the laser. I also sleep on the left side, so that can be a confounding factor. And they were all gone by two weeks. So 
hard to say that it was related. Um, one kind of surprising side effect I had from the IPL was that when I was getting the IPL, she hit an area of hair right up in my hairline and it singed it, it burned it, which you can see here, and that those little hairs actually fell out. So now I have a teeny tiny little bald spot. You can't even really see it from here. You know, I can notice it, but the good thing is, is that's unlikely to be permanent because that wavelength doesn't really target the hair follicle. So the hairs are likely to grow back. Also, it's pretty small. Also, that's totally a user dependent error, meaning if no one hits your hairline, that's not gonna happen. But it just goes to show how targeted the laser is opposed to the IPL, which you're just using a filter and it might hit some other things on the way like a hair follicle. So I guess for other side effects, you know, again, there weren't much, nothing that I'm really writing home about, but I guess it was kind of annoying to have that little like singed area of hair. So I would say IPL had a little more in terms of other side effects to consider. But again, those are gonna be pretty user dependent. So what about long-term results, right? That's why you're getting this. You don't want redness, you don't want swelling, flushing. So here I am at six weeks after and my skin looks great, honestly. I think I uh, had a lot less flushing, a lot less redness. Here are some photos. I really can't notice a big difference between the two sides. The little pimples on my cheeks that I usually get here and there, completely gone. So I'd say six weeks out, equivocal outcomes. And that's been shown in studies where side-by-side -side comparison generally have pretty equivocal outcomes in terms of controlling redness for rosacea. Now there's some suggestion that the PDL may have more sustained effects, meaning you might get like a longer term effect than the IPL, which could suggest you might need more IPL treatments in order to sustain the same result. Obviously it's too early at six weeks for me to see side by side. You know, obviously at six weeks, they both look great, but it's possible down the line that the redness would start coming back faster on one side than the other based on those studies. So in terms of outcomes side by side, I would say in terms of one week outcome, probably the IPL had a slightly better one week outcome. Again, because I was still having like these little pimples on the PDL side, hard to know if that was exactly really due to the PDL. In terms of six weeks outcome, I think they're equal and it's a tie. But I will point out one thing that IPL, PDL, these are not video games. These are not something that you can learn in a weekend course. It is pretty complicated physics and there are preset settings on these machines, but they are purposely very low risk. And so if someone's doing your procedure and they're not really experienced in using these machines, you're likely to get no effect. And that's actually what I hear more often than having had side effects and complications from these procedures is actually having no reaction, no effect from these procedures because someone did it who didn't really know what they were doing. And so just be aware of that when you are looking for a provider, you know, really favor board certified dermatologist, plastic surgeon, physician, or other provider who really has extensive experience with these lasers and light treatments. Because although side effects are pretty rare, it's actually more likely you're just gonna kind of throw away money by having someone do it with too low settings, settings that just aren't really gonna do anything. So really ask your provider, like how often do you do it for redness and rosacea? You can also ask around friends on message boards. You can go on the ASDS website site, which has lists of providers of procedural dermatologists in your area. And you can call their offices to kind of get a sense of what they use. All of this is to say that it's not a one size fits all. And certainly like in a Medi spa where the training might not be as good as like in a clinic setting, you may not get the same results from even the same machine. Okay. So the last thing we'll discuss is cost. So what's the cost difference between these? Now, obviously a lot's gonna go into cost. Um, it's gonna be dependent on where you live. You know, in New York, it's gonna be more expensive than Wyoming. It's gonna depend on what area you're treating. If you're just treating your cheeks versus your whole face, it's going to depend on the inflation. It's gonna depend on where you get your treatment. So again, the Medispa is probably gonna be cheaper 
than a clinic or hospital setting. But the reason you're gonna wanna know about costs is it is very rare for insurance to cover this. It's almost always an out-of-pocket cost. Of course, I'm speaking from a United States insurance view. I don't know in other countries whether or not it's covered by insurance, but I do know in the US it is extremely rare for it to be covered, even though rosacea is a medical condition. I guess they consider it just cosmetic. So first for IPL, so for IPL, it's gonna run you about 300 to $600 per treatment. So looking at that first initial series of treatments, you know, you're looking at a few thousand dollars. Also for PDL, pretty similar, but maybe a little more expensive at around 400 to 800 approximately. And again, these are in US dollars. So again, kind of equivalent, but PDL is gonna set you back a little bit more. Now, of course, you know, you really have to ask about the number of treatments that you think you'll need. Everyone is different. You may need just a few, you may need more. So that's gonna really come into play when you're kind of trying to calculate the cost. So the winner is, honestly, is really close. And I think it's gonna depend a lot on your priorities. I think IPL was the clear winner in terms of immediate post-procedure side effects. IPL had way less swelling, way less redness. Honestly, I barely noticed I had anything done on that side. It may be a little bit cheaper, but on the other hand, the PDL was slightly less painful, or at least I'm used to that type of weird discomfort. And it could be worth that little initial redness and swelling in the post-operative time frame if the results may be more prolonged as the studies say. Regardless of which you choose, hopefully at least now you know what to expect. You know what questions to ask your provider. You know how to look for a provider who's gonna give you great results. Check out this video if you're looking for natural treatments for rosacea. Please like this video, subscribe if you want more videos like this. I'm Dr. Abby Waldman, be well.